On this episode of Beer, Blues, and BS, the tavern has got the doors wide open because everybody's in love with IPA Appreciation Month, and we got quite a few of the gents returning to try and put down some more of these brews and to get themselves done with the 10 beers of IPA Appreciation Month. We got the local geek. We got Big D returning. Of course, Kidder is here, and JS will be kicking down the door later in the show. It's all good time. Great beers could be drank. Some good stories are going to be told. And uh, hey, maybe, just maybe, we will convince somebody to finally have Malort mixed with Circada. We'll see what can happen. But it's going to be all good. And uh, hey, there's an important story at the end of this episode. Make sure you stick stick all the way through um, because there's a member of the Triple B family who really could use some help. And we would really really find it in our hearts great if you could help somebody out so make sure to stay tuned for that but enough of kind of the down talk let's bring everything back up because you're in a good place welcome to the show it's howard blues and v mark kidder for a beverage prophecies and your time with the friends. triple b well the triple b sucks okay oh, come on Whatever, man. This is Beer, Beer Blues, and BS. Online at BeerBluesBS.com. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Beer, Blues, and BS, the podcast that's the podcast podcast. That was a terrible sentence. I am your host, the living embodiment of Charlie Brown, Howard Blues, here, as always, with my co-host, the man, the myth, the legend, the Mark Kidder. Kidder, how you doing tonight? Do I need to ask an assistant to come up with an opening line? I I mean, no, I, you could, but that would take away from the sheer awkward and often terrible opening lines I have. Hey, Google, what's a great opening line for a podcast? Let's find the perfect opening line for your podcast. A great opening line should instantly grab your listeners' attention and give them a clear idea of what your podcast is about. To help you brainstorm, please provide some details about your podcast. Topic or niche? What is your podcast about? Target audience? Who are you trying to reach? Tone and style? What is the overall vibe of your show? E.g. Funny, serious, informative, casual. Here are some general examples to get you started. For a humorous podcast, you won't believe what happened. (laughs) (laughs) Podcast. For an informative podcast, you know, I, uh, I I'd like to say at least my opening lines are far less textbook than that. <laughs> and speaking of far less test <laughs> textbook, uh, Kidder, we are joined tonight with some guests coming back because you know what? It's IPA Appreciation Month, and it's hard to keep the guests away to something as fun as that. Uh, joining us, it is the Triple B Brewmaster. The local geek is back. How you doing tonight? Hey guys, doing pretty good. Um, had a couple days off of work this week, so it was kind of a nice reprieve. And of course, got to have some IPAs. Yes, yes, because that is the time of year we're in. IPA Appreciation Month. Everybody enjoys that. And something that everybody else enjoys, it's a little bit of trolling. And for that, why we go all the way to... Well, okay, well, listen, I tried to make this sound good, but he's back because... Like, once you let him in, he just doesn't go away. And that means that, yes, if you figured it out, ladies and gentlemen, he is returning yet again. It's Big D. Big D, how are you doing tonight? That's right. I am the gum that will not get out of your hair. I am the turd that won't flush. I'm doing just fine. I thought that's what everybody Wait, liked just is when he up. left. <laughs> just, just saying. That's what it seemed like. That's what you were saying. It's not what I'm saying. That's what it seemed like you were I saying. I didn't even hear you say that. So that's yeah, I didn't hear you said so because he said it anyway. It wasn't me. Doing all right, (laughs) doing all right. Finally over the deal lag. Finally. Yeah. And now let's uh, you know, take this so far incoherent podcast and you know, make it more incoherent by getting to everybody's favorite segment on the show, and that is what's on tap. So I'm going to go in reverse order of people that I introduced on the show. So, Big D, what are you having tonight? Well, so it is not a brew, but I still can't show up empty-handed for the uh, Winnie the Pooh and Christopher Robin of internet podcasting. 
uh, in about seven hours from now, I am starting my drive. Shut up. In about seven hours from now, I'm starting my cross country drive to get my flight go over the Atlantic. So for that reason, I am not having any, but I am having a beverage at somewhat carbonated and now spilling all over the floor. So bear with me just one second. Come back to me. I got a big, uh, uh, big, big D. Big D. Do you, do you need a poncho? <laughs> I, I was going to say it's having one of your beverages, Howard. Yes. So I'm going to be at my. I'm going to mute my microphone to get future Howard Gray King up. Okay, well, while he's uh, doing that and struggling to open a beverage, and I thought my just not even be able to string a sentence was bad tonight. At least I know I can open my beer. Uh, let's jump over to the local geek. Local geek, what are you having tonight? I am going to have one out of the, uh, the pack you gave me. I'm going to have the Sierra Nevada Atomic Torpedo Imperial IPA. It's 9.2% ABV. Um, other than that, there is not a lot of text on the can, but it appears you're having the same one. So, yeah, so that's twice now we've randomly grabbed the same beer. <laughs> I, I was saving this one. Um, I'm not going to lie. I didn't look at all the uh, APVs when uh, I was making the official selections for um, IPA Appreciation Month. Uh, but I, I picked up. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get at least one, you know, Imperial one. Because I knew I was going to have one weekend where I'm parent in charge. And so I had set this aside to be parent in charge. And then it turned out like the Voodoo Rangers are actually a, a higher APV. But I'm sticking to my gun. So, yeah, so I'm having this as my one for the evening. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say I went through and sorted my box so that I didn't have two nine percenters in the same night. <laughs> Good call. I had three last week. Come on now. That one's that was not bad. It's pretty uh, pretty smooth for an IPA. It is not my favorite flavor profile. And also, Kidder, uh, yes, you may have had three nine point fives, but we all know you took two sips and then jumped the rest down the drain. What? No. <laughs> uh, that, that's all documented on the sheets. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's good big big d do you finally have your beverage under control yeah i do so it wasn't uh it wasn't that i couldn't open the lid clearly you uh, also can't run your mute button yeah i meant to do that making sure you're paying attention making sure there wasn't uh, too strong of a of a beverage you haven't been given from yet <laughs> yeah. uh no so so i got <clears throat> energy rock and butcher Strawberry Serenity. It has enough carbonation when it heats up a little bit or warms up a little bit to room temperature uh, that it made kind of a mess. So, kind of content with that. But, uh, yeah, can recommend Hamucha in general. Nice. It may not be an alcoholic beverage, but it is a fermented beverage. So, mm -hmm. yep. Been a fan for about a decade now. I, uh, I tried kombucha once and I was like, nope. And, uh, yeah, anyway, I've made him wait long enough. Kidder, what IPA are you having as part of IPA Appreciation Month? The next one that I can drain and get the f out of here. That's what this one. Pseudo Sue Pale. Hey, wait, wait a minute. It's a single hot pale ale. I feel like this is a fake. It's that really pretty good. It's actually really good. I feel like you're lying to me. No, that was the one that, Kidder, that was so good. And then Local Geek ruined it because that's then when we did the shot of my Lord. Mm. So, but it was so good. I like that was the first choice for IPA Appreciation Month. Okay. <clears throat> well, is this considered an IPA? Yes. Would you consider it an IPA, Local Geek? Yeah. It, it's got, right. mm, it's got a hoppy profile, but it's not like a in your face. It's, it's got good flavor with it. Local Geek has ruled. And as such, I will drink this. Pseudo Sue Pale Ale, Purple Dinosaur, Green Dinosaur, Unfiltered Beer Sediment is normal. 12 fluid ounces. And it's aluminum <clears throat> can. 5.8% alcohol by volume. It's brought to you, brewed by Toppling Goliath Brewing Company in Decorah, 
Iowa online at tgbrews.com. As long as this doesn't taste like dinosaur. What? Mountain Dew and hatred? <laughs> uh, no, like dirt and calcium deposits. Because dinosaurs aren't real. Ugh. I, I was referencing our mutual friend, Dinosaur, but... Oh, you mean Dinosaur. Oh, sorry. I didn't put the accent in the right place. That's, that's why we're confused here. <laughs> my, my bad. <laughs> yeah. Settle down, okay? <laughs> by, by the way, I'll give this Terrible. one probably a, a three out of five. It's not bad. I'm enjoying it. That is uh, terrible. I would give it like a 2.7. <clears throat> Point 4. <laughs> Getters moved into the positive numbers on an IPA. I, I know. Wait, what? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so, so, Local Geek, you're going to have to... I hope you're keeping track for IPA Appreciation Month so that we can like score all of these IPAs and find uh, out which one is the best. <laughs> so... <laughs> I haven't been tracking them separately so far, but I, technically the first episode just came out tonight. So Correct. So I'm telling you now so you can start. <laughs> but, mm, yes. The best one is the last one. And when it's done. <clears throat> hey, uh, you know, if you're JS, he's just got to be on like one more episode and he's got to be done. Like, <laughs> I think he's done like nine of the ten. Dang. <laughs> Just, yeah, he's had a rough time. <laughs> I'm I'm hoping to get uh, three knocked out tonight because I I know I'm not going to make it next week and I missed last week, so I'm behind. Mm. Mm-hmm. You uh you are that that is for sure. So, but that's okay because you know Big D hasn't even started. So, mm. <laughs> <laughs> not wrong. <sighs> yeah. So. Gentlemen, I, uh, I I feel like we should start by talking about the big news of the week, because of course there was big news where Bismarck is the hurricane. Uh, well, yes, or it's like the second coming of Noah's flood. Sure, tropical Are... storm Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking news. <laughs> Uh, clearly, this happened um, at the time of the, that this plays like three weeks ago. So no. <laughs> well, that, to be fair, for, for the triple B, that is breaking news. Three weeks later, <laughs> I thought you were talking about the news that the brewery in Chicago that was serving the cicada malort got fined for it. Oh, yes, is it? good. <laughs> good. Shut it down. Hey, hey, uh, hey, hey, Big D, are you, you going through Chicago on your road trip? I am. First stop's Detroit. Long drive. Ah, because uh, because we got a place for you to stop in Chicago for us. Mm, send me the uh, send me the link in the uh, messenger somewhere. See what I can do. But I'm waking up early and uh, gotta gotta make ten hours, and it'll probably take twelve because I'm traveling with a dog. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a. Have you ever heard of Malort, Big D? Yes, I have, but I must emphasize that was about 15 seconds ago when uh, Local Geek brought it up. Before that, no. <laughs> yeah. It is a, it, it, I, I think Big or, um, Local Geek put it best. It is the like sin of Chicago. It is a wormwood and grapefruit <laughs> beverage that sounds cool. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's, uh, mm-hmm. it's pretty bad. Um, uh, there's a bar in Chicago that decided to infuse some Malort with cicada because there's, you know, this big event with the cicadas happening on and they thought they would capitalize on it. So it is wormwood, grapefruit, and cicada. And we've been trying to get somebody to go through Chicago to try it and report back. So. Sounds like some brew that you'd see on Survivor. You're going through <laughs> Chicago. You have a chance to be our in the field reporter. Yeah, send me the address, but I 
just by the the sound of that, even a sip, I think would incapacitate me. And the talk is only halfway. So some of the descriptors I've heard of Malort is having a mouthful of bees and diesel fuel and being smacked in the head with a two by four. <laughs> okay. Um, tastes like erasers and sadness is another one. <laughs> I can't remember the others off my head, but there's there's some good ones out there. Those are my two favorites, though. Isn't isn't wormwood poison? Or am I thinking of something else? I think in large quantities it is, mm-hmm. or it's a hallucinogenic, or it's it's okay, what's so in absinthe it, that originally got it banned. And, yeah, the the you amounts that are in eat enough of it, you're so not going to have to worry about it. So just <laughs> keep going until you don't have to worry. Triple B tip of the day. We but like JS is was going through Chicago and we couldn't convince him to go and do it. So, okay. So you know the the gauntlet is there, Big D. You could you could get it. You could do a report from the road. You'd be a hero of the Triple B. Yeah. We'll talk. Probably going to pass, but <laughs> I won't. I won't guarantee that. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be one of those where I reach out. Hey, did you try it? You're gonna be like, oh, totally forgot. Sorry. <laughs> well, I, yeah. I, I see where your commitment to this show is. <laughs> so, uh, but no, that wasn't the news I was referring to, local geek. As we've gone on off on this Malort tangent, uh, I was talking about the massive rainstorm that came through Tuesday night and flooded Bismarck. So, and Mandan. I guess I should say Mandan. Local geeks on here too. So, uh, how'd you guys do? How did you survive? Uh, how did I? You're all good. In, uh, it, it barely okay. rained here. I got five hundredths of an inch of rain. We were all good in in my area, but I'm at the top of a hill, so most of the rain ran down. Um, I was actually in the middle of picking my son up from daycare right as the rain kind of started. And so I took his umbrella that I generally keep in the car in so that he would have an umbrella to come out to the car with. And he grabbed it and ran out to the car, leaving me unshielded. So uh, <laughs> I opened the car door, let him hop in, closed the door right behind him. And while I was going around to get in the driver's seat, he climbed up in his car seat and I sat down in the driver's seat. And he goes, Dad, you forgot to buckle me up. I said, I know I didn't want to get wet. <laughs> So then I took care of getting him buckled in and got him all settled. And I was like, that's very good of you to let me know that I didn't buckle you up. If I ever don't make sure you tell me. (laughs) And then uh, driving home, there was several uh, waiting pools we had to drive through in order to get home. But we made it. Um, We ended up having ordered Thai food a couple hours beforehand, not realizing the storm was coming. And you guys all know how expressway likes to flood. So um, going down to get that was another interesting endeavor. The corner of Washington and expressway was flooded all the way from one side of Washington to the other, basically. And uh, we ended up going down an extra block to get to the Thai place to avoid going through another puddle. But yeah, it was an experience and it was not something I enjoyed a whole lot, but we made it. I'm going to assume that's a lot of water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. B- big D, you'll have to just look um, for flood videos from Bismarck. It There were people kayaking down the water or the streets. There were cars being pushed down the streets. Um, several places floating in a ducky inner tube. <laughs> yeah, several several places flooded. The most dramatic one, and it it's um, I don't I think Kidder sent it to me. I, I'd seen it before he did, but um, at Sanford, I think it was one of their MRI rooms got flooded. Like it's, mm-hmm. which is the, the the best part of it. And I, I haven't seen anybody comment on this, but this particular MRI room, they have put some things over their fluorescent lights to make it look like clouds and a bright blue sky. And yet, here's just water just coming down through that. Just it. it that yeah. was a that's a first floor MRI room, by the way. I know. Um, there's, <laughs> there's seven floors above it and a basement below it. I've uh, I've been in that MRI <laughs> room actually. <laughs> <laughs> so the for for me, I was in Medora Tuesday, and I actually got back to Bismarck 
like after that storm had moved out of the area. And so like I saw like water in some of the ditches and me and the others who were riding with me, they're like, well, yeah, they, they did get some rain here. And we didn't realize how bad it was until like you're watching the news that night and you're like, whoa, we missed a, we missed a pretty intense storm apparently. <clears throat> but hey, you know, like we're showing up on all the news coverage. Random people who make their money off of, you know, like shorts and reels or and TikTok have been reusing other people's clips to try and make money of it. So there's that. So, uh, yeah, the Heritage Center, um, we did have some leaks in a couple of areas. So we, we had staff who unfortunately had to go back in and was trying to clean it up and all of that. But overall, not too much damage. None at my house. I, I was fine. So and it sounds like it just completely missed Kidder. So, <laughs> oh, no, it rained. It downpoured and then it stopped. I'm guessing Five you like. Fingers. I'm guessing you like stepped outside and you went, "Hey, knock that off." Which no, is, I wasn't even home. I will say, from my perspective at work, from it with all the flooding that we had, the only piece of network equipment that we had that was damaged was one single wireless access point in the ceiling, <laughs> which was pretty impressive for how much water was coming through those ceilings. Yeah. That's uh, I I would have thought you would have been busy the whole rest of the week, local geek, having to I, fix stuff. So, I mean, I was busy helping with other things, um, related to the flooding, and like I was pulled into. Normally, I don't have to attend like safety meetings in the morning and stuff. Then I got pulled into that that morning, and we had other issues that I've also been dealing with. So, mm. here I thought they were just like giving you like a bucket and a mop to try and like sop it up. You're just walking <laughs> the hospital like nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did message my boss when I saw all the flooding and let him know what was going on in case we had some issues happen from it because there could have been things that went down that were going to be irreparable that night. But um, I let him know that if somebody needed to run in that night to help out with mopping or whatever, that I could. I mean, that would have been a great opportunity. You just, you know, mop in the hallways every time you see like a patient like, hey, have you ever heard of the podcast? We're losing BS. <laughs> it's better than this flood. <laughs> <laughs> Well, once they fix the MRI machine, the next person to go in there, you sneak in there and say, hey, this podcast, right in the middle of the scan, calm them down. I've been an MRI machine. Howard, you've been an MRI machine. You know, the kind of claustrophobic. You want to distract yourself by something awesome. Yeah. Oh, hit or you too? Mm. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. Distract with uh, some awesomeness. That is the triple B. One of these days, if I'd you're like not to... entertained, you'll go to sleep. I don't know how anybody sleeps in those things. They're so damn loud. I, I, no, no, I did. Why? Yeah, I, I'm saying I don't know how you do it. I, I kudos to you, <laughs> kudos to you, sir. I'm sitting there like, God, oh, what the heck is that noise? And then it makes like a different noise. It's like, what's that noise? And then, yeah. Or do they have you all the way in the darn thing? Or yeah. oh yeah, or you were in, you were in the claustrophobic two from hell? Yeah, mm -hmm. for like three hours mm. the last time. Oof. <laughs> yep. With with. No music. Um, the first MRI I ever got, like they actually could could put music into the tube, which was at least um, the nice thing about that was I could at least kind of keep track of how long I'd been in there. You know, because if you kind of think about it, if the average song is like three and a half minutes, then I could sit there and count the songs and go, okay, well, this is the fourth song. You know, eh, I've probably been in for, you know, 12, you know, 15 minutes. So had a little base, of, you know, of that. But like the last time when it was three hours, I had no way of knowing. So it was just dead silence. Well, not dead silence, just the sound of the machine. And that was it for. That was. They pulled him out and he goes, What year is it? <laughs> <laughs> Funny thing is the second day. So Wednesday, we got more rain. Got six tenths of an inch of rain that day, so I got more rain that day when the day everybody flooded. I was Big I was back out in Medora. Big D, if you want to see it, I got it on my Facebook page. If you want to pull it up while we're sitting here, yeah, I'll take a look. See, and while Big D's doing that, kicking down the tavern door as is his style, it is the official armor of the Triple B. JS Gunslinger is here. JS, how you doing tonight? 
Wonderful, gentlemen. Wonderful. Uh, we are in Chicago, Illinois, right now for the All American Grooming Seminar. Just got oh, done with go to the day uh, one. Brewery for us. <laughs> right, so JS is already there. So he needs remember to go that he the, has the guns. Water. Yes, remember. They're not allowed in Illinois. <laughs> uh, yes, JS, yes. I'm, I'm, pass, I'm passing through Chicago tomorrow. They're trying to get me to stop and drink that warm word. Yes. We were trying to get him oh, to stop and you, get the malort with mixed with cicada. Do you want to get? Do you want to get some awesome, awesome <laughs> alcohol and have the best shot you've ever had? Well, uh, you do it first. Record it. Let me see it. <laughs> so we've already done it. Recorded. So <laughs> yeah, it's on the show. You missed it. It's on the show. <laughs> now we're here for uh, All American Grooming Seminar. I can't stay too long. Everybody else is sleeping. So, but uh, day one, day one went really good. We had a ton of traffic, ton of people come through. Um, good turnout for the show. Uh, finally got some sleep yesterday. Uh, I left Bismarck at like two thirty in the afternoon. I didn't get I didn't get here until six a.m. It rained the entire way from Bismarck to Chicago. I stopped outside of Eau Claire to take a nap for a couple hours. It was a drive. Um, but uh, yeah, made it through setup yesterday. Took about a four hour power nap in the afternoon and then slept like a rock after uh, after going out to having, having some uh, super awesome Mexican food. Kidder's got some got some fiddle. Wow, Kidder's got some photos and commentary from it. Um, the uh, food was damn good. It looked and then really uh, good. I'm sad I wasn't there. I uh, I did make a stop at a local uh, beverage facility and picked up some what I think might be some interesting content for the show. <laughs> you know, we love our interesting content. <laughs> <laughs> well, none of it, none of it is in is in English, so I have no idea what we got. <laughs> well, it's okay. We we got a big D. He can uh, he can tell us, you know. <laughs> it's uh, uh, it. He might be able to. Uh, Kidder's got the photos. Uh, it's all out packed away in the van, so it stays cold. But uh, hmm. but yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy I'm gonna enjoy this here beverage, and then uh, I'm gonna go pass out. That's uh, that's good. What you having? What is that? Uh, I I have one of the one of the staples. It's the Liney's Summer Shandy. Uh, this is one of my one of my favorite beers, especially for the summertime. So uh, we just had our team just had our team dinner for the night at the uh, Kidder's favorite restaurant. So you know, get to rub that in a little bit for him. You had out back without me. I mean, you could have come to Chicago, and you could have signed. You could have met up with Big D. I mean, you know, you could have drank the Malort mixed with cicada. Come on, right. there's a <laughs> there's a couple somewhat fancy bars uh, like three blocks from where we're staying. Could have been a good time. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have you know, you know, JS. While you're there, they uh, I don't know if they still do it, but they used to do a challenge coin if you hit a specific six bars and have a shot of Malort at each. <laughs> I don't think there's a challenge coin in the world that's worth that. Like if it's made of solid twenty-four karat gold, I will do it. But unless it's it's that, I'll pass. I doubt that. <laughs> that yeah. seems a bit yeah. much. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll pass. I'm sure Maybe after you'll do it. I'm sure after the first shot, your taste buds are just dead, and you don't even care about the like, other five. It's like, well, okay. Right. So uh, since JS did a What's on Tap and I'm out, I'm going to jump in quick and have a, a second one here. Oh. I grabbed the Central Time Midwest IPA from Bismarck Brewing Company. <laughs> um, there is don't nothing like else it. really don't to speak of on the can, not even uh, ABV. So. There's nothing to speak on about the taste of it either. Don't give it away. Shh. Oh, Shh. well, damn it. Oh, that's funky. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with that smell? Wait till you taste it. <sighs> <laughs> oh, finally, a beer that broke the brewmaster. <laughs> Oof. That doesn't taste like anything. 
What 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 beer was that? That's a I central. It's that Central Time IPA, the one local IPA I picked up from the Bismarck it's like Brewing. They, it's like they made a seltzer oh. and forgot to put flavor in it. You mean the one that all of us hated? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not good. That one that one's gonna get my first uh, like point one out of five. Wow. Yeah. So so you're saying you don't want one of the two I have left? No. That's okay. Damn. Because um, I, I, uh, I have two of those left. Because <laughs> I bought a six pack. So you could, anyway, you could send one ahead for Big D. <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly we need like a fifth local uh, regular guest that I could pawn him off on. <laughs> More than likely, I'm just going to take him out to my dad's ranch and put him in his beer fridge. Oh, that's I mean. Put some lead into him. Uh, no, I mean, no, I'll just throw it away for you. I, well, here's the thing. So, my my dad, um, they host a dog group out there. Um, he's part of NAVDA, the North American Versatile Hunting Dog Association, and so they use my dad's um, land basically as a training ground. And he has in his shop a bear fridge. And his really only kind of rule with it is, if you take a beer out, you have to put a beer that is equal or cheaper than what you. Uh, you know, took out. So by the end of like some of the worst beer or the cheapest beer ever. So I can easily, the next time I'm out there, just slip those in there and some poor soul will. <laughs> well, on a better note, maybe. <laughs> I, like how we're, I like how we're getting to everybody's like second favorite segment of the show. What's on tap <laughs> round two drink without me even doing the intro. This is great. Well, now you did it. And I'm going to do this Citrus Dive. Yes, Citrus Dive IPA. Ugh. Diving into I think the you're gonna dumpster. Like, I think you're going to like that one, Kidder. It's full citrus, two bars of piney. Uh, Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. IPA a month is bringing out the, the best of us, I guess. <laughs> Uh, three bitters, four crisps, and it's a 6% uh, IBA. Yes, even Freya wants to take a look at it because she's wondering what is wrong with me for drinking this trash. Dive into this bright and hoppy IPA. Yeah, she's she's done with it. She doesn't want anything to do with it. I don't blame you because I don't either. And I'm stalling opening this freaking thing. That one has actually gotten pretty good reviews on from the guests who have had it. Well, allow me to change that. <laughs> <laughs> it still smells like garbage. So, being we had this this IPA appreciation month, uh, is there like a is there like a like a wonderful hey. hour appreciation month? <laughs> <laughs> that should be August, because <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah you don't like that one either kidder god bless it it no <clears throat> <laughs> in fact minus 10 points from howard for saying that i was gonna like this one and <clears throat> minus three on the scale i actually thought you would i enjoyed that one i mean as much as you can enjoy a IPA. That's because it was your fifth, so it tasted better. Actually, it was the wow. second. <laughs> I'm not mistaken. Recorded. <laughs> yeah. Second recorded beer. I, listen, I mean, IPA Appreciation Month has so far given us some really great content. I mean, I was thinking, haha, this will be a one time thing, kind of funny, but I think this is going to keep going. <laughs> you do whatever I, I, you want, I'm, man. I'm, they are not coming back I'm in the just, house. Ever, I'm still upset that this is not a real thing, and I was tricked into this debauchery. <laughs> you yeah, son of a bitch. and if you don't know where he lives, I do, and I'll drive you there myself. <laughs> I've been there once, but I'm sure I can find it. I mean, oh yeah, I'm sure. Listen, listen, it it's given us plenty of content. You know, it, <laughs> People are enjoying watching us all suffer through this. I mean, are they though? <laughs> Listen, I, Big D keeps coming back to watch this. I, 
the, that's like that's the, the only reason three, he's the showing. whole three people that watch this show. Yeah, <laughs> and they're on the show right now. <laughs> <laughs> sake. Why well, you got me squared, <laughs> Jesus? <laughs> You know, I uh, I did binge watch some some episodes on the, on the drive down here. So, mm. you mean uh, listen to them? Yes, yes. I would never watch something and drive at the same time. Well, yeah. Any uh, any good ones that you that you listened to? Any that were like this was an exceptionally good episode? Um, I think I watched one sixty eight. So sorry, 167, 168, and 170. Yeah, that's so, a pretty good run, actually. Yeah, so. I didn't I didn't go back too far, but I, those were the ones I could find while I was not moving down the highway. Um, <laughs> you just had it on shuffle on Spotify. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. No, oh, those are geez. these things come <laughs> out of nowhere. Like, what is wrong with this beer? <laughs> what is wrong with I'm this? Sitting one? Here and I, I'm just fine, and then all of a sudden, like the attack of the hop. By the way, Howard, I asked if uh, Big Brother Boom wanted one of these, and he said hard pass. <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> I, I didn't even tell him what it was, other than that it was an IPA. <laughs> that guy's got some genius smarts, right there. I don't, I don't know. He he drinks Malort on the regular, so. Uh. <laughs> He does enjoy Malort. There's something wrong with that boy. I mean, we could say that there's something wrong with him for buying the uh, the blanket with my face on it, but <laughs> that's a whole separate conversation. Uh, I think the bottom. Right. <laughs> Waiting for Big D to buy one of his face on a shower curtain or blanket, oh, okay, or chef's apron. <laughs> See, see, Big D, now there's a Christmas present idea for you. You just get some of those, send them to each member of your family. Yes. And then they have your happy, smiling face anytime they want. Eating an or Oreo ice cream be- sandwich, hand scooped from Hardee's. We won't be allowed back in Minnesota ever again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm just glad, though, that Big D has been on this uh, current run of shows, because that means I can hide that picture of him with the ice cream sandwich and all of our thumbnails again. I love it on this week's episode. <laughs> he didn't even know because he doesn't look. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I get a, a personal bit of joy just hiding that picture in there somewhere. <laughs> so Hang on a second. now he's pulling it up. He's like, where is this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I had the episode planned before we started. Where are you, where are you at now, Big D? Uh, Twin Cities, Minnesota. But I Start my drive out to uh, Baltimore tomorrow, and that thumbnail is really small. I'll look for it later. Oh. So <laughs> consider this uh, an advance. How would you peep it? <laughs> yeah, uh... yeah, but yeah, no, I'm um, uh, on the way out to uh, Detroit tomorrow, and then hang out there. I have a cousin who lives out there. I'm crash there for a day or two, then finish down the drive to Baltimore. And I uh, hop on the plane at like 9 p.m. on Tuesday. Nice. When are you coming through Chicago? Uh, tomorrow at about probably 10 a.m. But I looked at where that uh, brewery is, and it's a little bit off my path. So sorry, uh, can't right. go drink the the drink from hell. <sighs> oh man, yeah, I was gonna say that the the, the show starts tomorrow at 10. And I'll I'll probably be there from like 10 to 10 tomorrow. I think tomorrow night's the uh, meet and greet and whatnot too. So, but is there yeah. a fee to get in? Can Big D stop and meet the official armor of the Triple B? I mean, I could here. get you in. I could, I could, I could get you in. Thing, but I got he, he could groom your dog for you on the way through. Yeah, oh, shampoo that's... smell nice and fresh for the ride. Right? We could freshen up that haircut for you. <laughs> for you, he's saying. Not for your dog. <laughs> yeah. Just that was you there, there, but you did, so. <laughs> I got 700 miles to cover. So, so you're definitely going to need some bubbles in your butt. Gotcha. Well, listen, yes. I mean, 700 miles. 
<laughs> you clearly have now the time to uh, partake of several episodes of the Triple B while you're driving there. <laughs> And I do got lots of podcasts uh, to listen to on the way. I get downloaded them on my phone because my prepaid plan, I only have five gigs of data while I'm here and I've burned through half of it already. So download some stuff with the Wi Fi before I go. Mm. Yeah. So you, you, could, you, could, you could download that and then you wouldn't use your uh, your data. And we're a perfect thing to listen to on the road. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Perfect to listen to. And the fact that you don't have to walk at least 500 miles. But almost walk five hundred more. You know, wow. you're driving. We're making proclaimers references. Yeah. Also, I, I, your sad, IPA. sad news to share. Greg Kine has passed away of the Greg Kine band. You may know him from songs like Jeopardy. I was in Jeopardy, baby. And then of course there's a parody I lost on Jeopardy baby i think uh weird al made that one if i remember right ah thanks howard and then uh the breakup song with the subtitle of they don't write them do run not, not anymore so he has officially broken up with life at the age of 75 and he's on to the next plane of existence i like well, what we've terrible. learned so far I tonight don't, i don't know who that is but that is terrible news i'm, I'm very saddened so sad that you're going to go to a bar and drink a shot of Malort mixed with cicada? Yeah. Um, I'll think about it. Clearly, you're not sad enough. <laughs> <laughs> you, you caught me. No, he thought about it. He just thought that it's not a good idea and he's not going to do it. So he's got a brain. Yeah. Looks like looks like local geeks going for his third IPA of the night. I had to get rid of that one quick. That was bad. I drank it all though. Good kudos, kudos. I, I had a bag of Cheetos as a palate cleanser, and it didn't quite last. <laughs> <laughs> you should have had a shot of whiskey. Yeah, I know. I didn't have that on hand, but oh. uh, I did grab the citrus dive that uh, Kidder's having. So, mm. uh, yeah. All right. Uh, also, J- six percenter. JS, I, I gave one of these to Kidder for you. It's the peach finish oh. long drink. That's the surprise that I have for you in my fridge. Interesting. Which I didn't think Ooh, he was going to I'm, ruin. I'm kind of excited. You know. I, I think you'll enjoy it. it. As long as it doesn't taste like that blue water, we're good. It does not taste like the blue one. Okay. But I, I also... The blue is my favorite. This knocked it out of the park. This is so much better. So it's going to be terrible. Well, I I mean, listen, you know, your results may vary, but I think local geek will back me up that it was pretty good. It it was fantastic. I mean, I love peach, so I'm, I'm kind of with Howard. It blew all the others out of the water. Have you had the blue one? Yes. Did did you think the blue one tasted like gold? Because I did. I enjoyed the blue one. It's, it's not the, Favorite one out of all the ones I've had, even before the peach. I think I like the cranberry the best before that. Yeah, like the red one's good. That black one was really good. The blue one is is, is freaking terrible. I think you need to retry the blue one. I don't know. Maybe I do. Maybe whatever I had before that painted it for me. I'll I'll give it another shot. Or, or maybe you had a bad can or something. Because the black one and the blue one are supposed uh, to be the same flavor. Yeah. Yeah. I'll. I'll give it another shot. I, I must have had something, but we'll I, we'll go with that. We'll see what happens on the on the uh, revenge tour. But you know, yeah. I, I, However, I, no, prior go ahead. to the uh, prior to the impl- implementation of round three, I I am getting an angry look from the uh, the, the the pretty redhead over here oh, in the corner no. that it is now time for bed. So, oh no, I I ten o'clock yes. on the nose. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. turn it in. Thanks for joining, and uh, you know, good luck with the show. Yeah, yeah, sounds good, gents. We'll uh, all the we'll best. Maybe try and jump. We'll maybe try and jump in on the next show for uh, you know a full three hours of shenanigans. So <laughs> three hours again. <laughs> Howard's like, three please no. <laughs> uh, yeah, please no. Uh, have right. a good time. Have a good Looking th- forward to more updates for food and what you're up to and. Hearing about, of course, uh, between now and when you're hitting the road. So good luck. All the best, Sounds JS. Good, 
We'll catch Peace you out. soon. And like that, and, uh, he's gone. This guy here, I'm going to give him probably a 2.5. I don't think you gave him a score yet, Kidder. What's yours? Yeah, it was minus four. And Howard got 10 points deducted for... Uh, I didn't Howardism. know... I didn't know I was being scored in this, <clears throat> but no, off of your rating of these beers, you get ten points deducted collectively. No, 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 you can't do that. That's going to alter yep. the uh, yep. the overall. We got to find out which one's yep. the best, Kidder. Space time continuum is getting screwed with tonight. <laughs> I, I have created a uh, spot on the spreadsheet to track the scores on all these. Now, I I think we may have missed some already. Of course, he has. But... <laughs> Damn local geek is efficient. <laughs> um, the the Voodoo Ranger Tropical Force that uh, me and you both had last, or the one that came out tonight, Howard. Neither one of us gave us gave it a score. I don't think. Wow, we well, we both enjoyed that one though. I yes, I uh, you know what? I probably would have rated that a four. I was actually thinking the exact same thing. In, in oh. fact, I, I I can tell you that I thought highly of it because I bought a twelve pack of it. When I was at the store. What is there. wrong with I, you? Stop encouraging this garbage from happening at breweries. It is a cancer among breweries in this country. That this one was is tasty, outrageous. Kidding. You got to try that outrageous. one. Outrageous. That one was quite tasty. There was very little hop flavor to it. Yeah, but that's the same brewery that makes Mountain Time. And they're not making Mountain Time. They're making this garbage. They also make fifteen fifty four. <sighs> this has been like the best month of content <laughs> that we've done in a while. <laughs> I really want to know what Peter thinks of that one because it is not hoppy. <laughs> oh, this is this is this has been great. This has just been great. Mm. Yeah, I'm just sitting here thinking I'm going to murder all of you. So, uh, I got a fun story. I've got a friend, my friend uh, that lives out in Vermont that he comes down every summer and visits for a couple of days. He's here in town right now. And this year I asked him on his, before he came, I asked him to pick me up a couple pounds of honey from Vermont and didn't tell him why. So uh, today me and him made some uh, Vermont honey and maple mead that will be ready next year when he comes to visit to drink. So. It's sitting in the fermenter right now, and I'll, of course, not be able to move it to the bottles with him, but I'll take pictures of the process and show him what's going on with it, and hopefully next year uh, he'll be able to have a drink of it with me. He doesn't drink right now due to some medications he's on, but he said hopefully next year he's going to be off of those. But if not, he still appreciates the idea that I wanted to make something 100% with Vermont products. So. I, I'm still waiting to try the first mead you've made. Like, I'm... I haven't forgotten this because I've never had mead. So I'm like, I'm like champing at the bit to give this a try. Local geek. I'm, I'm excited. So I, I have sampled it. And it's pretty good. So yeah, it's, it still had some alcohol bite the last time I tried it. So I'm trying to age it out a little bit longer and see if that gets a little bit mellowed. But well, gents, I, I have a story. Um, that I, I think you guys might find fun. Uh, so last weekend, um, my wife was really geared up because Howie Jr. starts preschool next week. So she also is working this weekend. So she wanted to use last weekend to do something just fun with the kids. Um, and so uh, they had been gifted some tickets to the Super Slide Amusement Park. So we took the kids to the Super Slide Amusement Park. And uh, I don't know if you guys have been there recently but they uh they repainted the super slide and i don't know what kind of paint they put on that sucker but boy is it fast like <laughs> incredibly fast um it was the first thing we did and junior went down and it it he like, he was going so fast he he actually kind of lost a bit of control and fell backwards so he ended up sliding down on his back but it scared him so he was, you know, he didn't want to go because for one ticket, you get two times down. He, he didn't want to go the second time. Uh, he eventually overcame it. But uh, at the end, he decided to try it again, but he wanted to ride down with me. He's like, Dad, you know, will you go with? And I'm like, yeah, sure. 
we can do this, buddy. And um, I proceed to 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 go down. And because I am the living embodiment of Charlie Brown, you know, they, they give you like that wool blanket that you're supposed to sit on and such. And I didn't get it quite up over uh, all of my leg. And so as I was going down, as I pull this up, uh, about halfway down, felt a really nice, fun burning sensation along my leg. And I have a, a literal kind of like heat burn. <laughs> and it's probably a good oh, six, seven inches on my leg. Oof. <laughs> that I just literally got that uh, friction burn. That was fun. Um, so that was great. Uh, but but the I, I say that this slide that they have done something to it because we witnessed one kid fall off the slide going down, like got past like the one guardrail and he just went over. Um, but the the other one that I saw, and it was before. Um, it was actually before Junior and I made our first run down. Uh, this one kid went down, and almost the same thing that happened to to Junior. He fell backwards, but he kind of tried to catch himself, rolled into the next lane, and coming down was uh, I don't know if it was his dad or like because they were kind of in a group, so it might have been another dad in the group was coming down with a kid on there, and it was just a high speed, just pow, just took this kid out i mean it was like a center ice check it was, it was brutal i'm just like whoa whoa that's like there was like the the dad had tried to stop but you know there's nothing to grab there's nothing way to break on there so there was a hat on the slide the guy's sunglasses were on the slide it was <laughs> wow i saw on facebook murder. that they're doing some uh remodeling of a lot of the stuff there this spring so yeah that's no that's good that, Need that, to update it. Yeah. But that's like oh. <laughs> Also, yeah. Kidder, that beer you grabbed was not the uh, Voodoo Ranger that we've been talking about that you need to try. I thought I had that already. Maybe you have. It might be on the... It might have happened last week. Because you weren't here, local geek. Last I was week. not. <laughs> so I, I was I had unfortunately that sick last week. <laughs> Whether it's been on this show or not, and... If it was off the show, then uh, yeah, <clears throat> I'm not having it again. Uh, I did, however, grab this one out of the fridge. Howard, you want to see the thing? What? That we have entered everybody's third favorite segment of the show. What's on tap? Round three. Drink. I mean, yeah, I already started like round that. three a while ago. <laughs> I know, but you guys don't always like, like, let me cue that up so I've like every now and then I have to like work it in like later. Thank you though, Kidder, for 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 tossing that up. Let me knock it out of the park. I appreciate it. What you having? Don't shake that up. That could be bad. <laughs> I like the concerned look on Big D's face. Like I wasn't actually going to drink this. <laughs> He's he, or maybe that I am going to drink it, and he's concerned for my safety. That would be a first. Uh, Deschutes Brewery, family and employee owned since 1988. <clears throat> the original main squeeze, if you know what I mean. A perfectly crushable and balanced IPA with bright citrus and tropical fruit notes online at DeschutesBrewery.com from Bend, Oregon, just down the road from Straight, Oregon. Tasting notes are two notes of tropical, four citrus, four crisp. <laughs> what did you throw? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Well, screw you too. Don't make me start to swear and piss off future Howard. This is freshest within four months. Okay, we're still within four months. It was uh, packaged on May 8th. Thank God. 6.4% alcohol by volume, 12 fluid ounces, and this nasty-ass giant freaking hop on the front of the can. A side note, Howard, I talked Big Bada Boom into trying one of those Bismarck Brewing ones. If you want to get one my way, I'll get it to him. Oh, salt. 
Uh, I told them we expect a review. Uh, yes, yes, with with a review. <sighs> uh, I'm getting a headache. Uh, this one at least doesn't beat you over the head with the hops, but <sighs> I feel my allergies being triggered by these. Mm. Does that mean I need to put a trigger warning on this? (laughs) Sorry, carry on. (laughs) Minus five points for instigation. And I'll give this a point five. No, kid, okay, you're wondering what I was throwing. I uh, was unboxing. I actually picked up here recently from uh, the Army Painter. I picked up their metallic speed paints. So I was kind of wanting to experiment with them. Do so you I was just done faster with those. Is it like plus 10 speed or what? So the idea behind speed paint is that you, you start with a model that you have primed white, and they are of a particular consistency so that when you paint on them, uh, it will go down into the crevices, and if done correctly, you'll get kind of your highlight, your your midtone, and your your shadow all in one quick um, paint job, and with one paint, it's kind of okay. Um, it's nice to see that Orange Cassidy is supporting IPA Appreciation Month. Um, I like the speed paints on things and we'll see if it shows, but like the leather on this guy's coat is actually all done with the hardened leather um, speed paint. So all of the kind of different tones and scratches on that, it's all one paint, one coat that was applied. So I don't tend to like a lot of the uh, speed paints. Um, They tend to leave a very meh kind of coloration to them. Uh, so I'm not super thrilled with them, uh, but I'm kind of just experimenting with them and giving them a try. So I bought some metallic ones. I want to see if they're any better on the metallics. Metallic Thanks. is playing in Minneapolis tonight, and I couldn't go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that. I wanted you to go. Yeah. I was cheering for you to go. Hey, if you had uh, 500 bucks, I would gladly take that off your hands. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, man. I got kids. (sighs) And a probably very strong addiction to little plastic miniatures. Mm. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. While we're on the topic of uh, art and spending money, I I got some art done uh, yesterday. I can't see it really can't see it real well but i'll send howard a picture so future howard can throw it up in there and i uh, got a tattoo for my son it's the time of day that he was born and then uh, it's a pocket watch and then the chain on it i'm going to attach charms throughout his life of things that he's interested in so started with a uh, miles morales spider-man which is a character he's been really into the last probably two years so things that hold his interest pretty heavily i'll add to it throughout the time and Do you have enough space marked out? And is it by like 5, 10, 15? You have enough? Just just as he gets big interest. But yeah, I've got, I mean, I've got my whole arm. I can wrap the chain around and turn it into basically a sleeve over time. Spent about three hours yesterday getting that done. So that was a pretty good chunk of time getting tortured. (laughs) Yeah, getting a tattoo, not something I can ever foresee myself doing. It's um it's my fifth one, so <laughs> Hey, I know a guy, Howard, and I think that uh, I should challenge you to get the triple B logo tattooed on you. Uh no. No. Right in your hand. Like the I guess with like the, the permanence of it that you're not a fan of or um y- yes. Uh and it's because I look at my life and I look at how like my interests have changed. And so the thought of putting something on me that is permanent that I may in ten years be like, Oh, 
I don't even really he doesn't associate like with that. this show that much. <laughs> it's just, you know, <laughs> one of those where I, I I just have never been like anything that I have felt so super strongly. Like I will have to have this ingrained upon me forever, if that makes sense. Yeah, that not, makes sense. Not, nothing against anybody who gets tattoos. I actually think that there's some amazing tattoo art out there. Um, I have a old friend from uh, my childhood days who actually has done some, he does some amazing uh, tattoo work. Um, he's got a shop down in um, Galveston, Texas, uh, Von Striga, and he's, he's good enough. He, he, like in January, he opens up like all of his time slots for the year and you have to sign up in January and he books the entire year in just a couple wow. of weeks. Nice. Like, he's that good. You know, he's, he's amazing. Um, I, I, so I like, I like following his social media just to look at his art. Cause it's, you know, nice. It's, it's gorgeous. But I, again, I just, I could not ever come up with anything that I'd be like, yeah, I want to put that on there. Cause I just, I know myself and it's like in 10 years, I'd be like, eh, why'd I do that? I see, see all the ones I've gotten so far. Um, obviously, obviously this one, my son's interests are going to change over his life, but they're things going to be things that have held his interest for a significant amount of time before I put them on there. So like say he gets into sports or some specific board game that he's super into or things like that. I'll put them on there. Um, my other ones, I inadvertently turned my legs into memorials for my family. So I, I my first tattoo was a tattoo in memory of my cousin who passed away in 2004. And then uh, my second one was, while my grandpa was still living, I got a fisherman to kind of represent him because he always took me fishing as a kid. And now he's passed away. And um, I added another one to the same leg that one was on. That was a tattoo that he actually tattooed on himself when he was a kid. And then I added a dandelion to that tattoo, which was my grandma's favorite flower. And then my on the leg where my cousin passed away, I've uh, also put a rose for my grandma, whose name was Rose. And I'm planning to add something for my grandpa and another cousin who's passed away on that side of the family. And then I'll probably add for my uncles as they pass away as well. But inadvertently it's kind of become a memorial on each of my legs. And so, and uh, you know, big D's got some tattoos. Yeah. And I, w I went back and forth over the years prior to getting them, whether I was uh, you know, going to get them, if not the, uh, the, the, the one of my both of my arms uh, each took me two years to come to uh, decision what I wanted. Uh, basically, my personal rule was I have to be able to easily cover them with a short sleeve shirt, which I can. So, if I ever do have that regret, which I which I don't at this point, but never say never. Uh, I, they're easily uh, covered up, so I kind of mitigate some of that regret. But at least so far, when I get them touched up. I might get the one on my right arm covered up with a uh, different design, but overall. That was happy. my reason for going on my legs originally was for, for like work purposes to be able to hide them. And now at this point in time, they've become accepted enough that I felt comfortable getting this one on my forearm where it's more visible. My current job is fine with having visible tattoos. And should I get a new job in the future that's not, I guess, I'll have to wear long sleeves. But the only one I got on a snap decision was the one right here. And they're freaking hurt. I don't know if I'm ever doing a test tattoo again. <laughs> that that one's isn't that one the uh, the outline of Indiana? That's racist. Wait, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I just I have to ask. Uh, fun fact, Big D. Uh, we actually mocked you for that tattoo in one of the first times that we like back when we before we got you on the show the first time. When for like forty some episodes we were calling you out. That was I, one I, I remember that one. Yeah, that was that was one of the first ones. Was on uh... my interests change constantly, and I I can't think of anything that I'd be like I'd be okay and I'm sure that I would like you know ten fifteen years from now. So I I have a hard time saying yeah put that on me permanently. Fighting Sioux logo. Or the Colorado Avalanche logo. Bam, we're done. <laughs> Got it for but, you. Yeah, I just, I, I would hate to get, you know, like a tattoo that you would just 
look back at it and go, why did I do this? You know, just something stupid like the outline of Indiana on your chest. I mean, that would just be a terrible tattoo, a horrible <laughs> tattoo. I, I obviously not me, but I I, I know the, uh, the the gentleman originally from a certain state as to whom you're referring. I, I, <laughs> yeah, you know. So this is why I wanted to bring it up before we ended the show, Kidder, because uh, <clears throat> until said gentleman, because he, you know, I made kind of a general offer for him to appear on this show and. Mm-hmm. All he said was that, well, if I ever did, I would troll you guys. Well, that's not a confirmed, you know, like, yeah, I'll do it or mm-hmm. put me on the next one. And the jerk's about that to sounded kind of like a weak ass excuse to me. So right. I think well, that, he's, uh, yeah, he's he's about to be uh, stationed out in Guam. So that's going to make this impossible. So I have decided until he comes on that every episode <laughs> I will be harassing said uh-huh. individual until he uh, comes on and defends himself. So, ah. okay, yeah. you're welcome. <laughs> okay, and since we're talking about tattoos, and I'm sure that especially Hitter would enjoy hearing a story because we have a story time earlier. You want to hear a story about some personal pain that Big D suffered? I can picture it. And Howard, your picture of your whatever that was, burn, fired me to bring this up. I don't know why. So, yeah, did I ever show you all my the progression of my smallpox vaccine back in 2010? No. Yeah, I can't say that you have to right now, aren't you? To what? No. Uh, uh, it, local geek just sent us to- pictures of all of his tattoos. So. Yeah, so unlike you. Prior to, going to, prior to going to Afghanistan in 2010, I had to get three vaccinations. One with smallpox, one with anthrax, one with typhoid. So I got one of getting typhoid and anthrax in my left arm, or excuse me, right arm, and then smallpox was on your non-dominant arm. And that one is like 15 little uh, pricks that it has to, they have to be able to see you blood, even a little bit of blood, but just so that they know it, it penetrated. So now... Damn I'm vampires. Gonna... Right? Hang on a second. Did that one leave a scar? Uh-huh. A little bit. Let's see I was going to say, my father-in-law's got a scar from when he had his as a child, so... Yep. Right. So, I'm going to share out of my photo album. So, this is my left arm with a tattoo. You know, that little red dot, that's the uh, that's the first uh, little sign of it. Let's see if I can get this. And what does the tattoo yeah. mean? The storm. Literally, it means violent wind. So I was briefly considering uh, putting one symbol on each ass cheek, but no, that was all too much. Yes. <laughs> Passing gas. So here's like A4. It. A little bit more noticeable. This is me in my dorm room. And then this is day six. Out. There's a nice little little foil there. And then this is where it gets really gnarly. Okay, day seven, not so gnarly, but day ten starts oh, to grow a little bit. Yeah. Little little rash and uh Fevers, my swollen lip nose. It was awesome. I hated every bit of it. And then changing from violent wind to breaking wind. Yeah, right. And this is day sixteen, and this is how it remained for the uh, remaining two weeks. And then it just kind of fell off as a scab. But yeah, that um, that sucked. And since it was a story of personal pain, get her figured you would you would enjoy it. I appreciate that. And Howard, if you uh, if you show all those pictures of my tattoos, the reason that those last two are just line drawings, the one my grandpa did on himself was just a line to begin with. But the other one I intentionally did as a line drawing for my son to basically use as a coloring book until he no longer has an interest in it. And then I'll probably get it filled in with something that he draws. 
Cool. Cool. I have been asked and have thought about tattoos. My problem is that placement. Because I'm like, I want this here, but this here. And then six months, I'm like, no, I want that there or there. And so if I don't get any, then I don't have to worry about wanting to change the placement. <laughs> right? Because it's like this stuff. Yeah, I've had everything up here for six years. But there's nothing stopping me from changing all of this around. Just well, if you ever decide to get one, I know a guy. Oh, I know a guy. I know a guy. <laughs> my my son's babysitter's husband is the the one that did this most recent one. So, and my my parents' neighbor is a one of the top ones in town, in my opinion. Nice, because I've seen a lot of his work. After the show, you can uh, tell me who he is. <laughs> I'll let you, I'll let you know who my guy is. I know they're not the same person. <laughs> But my uh, my wife has a tattoo, so she got one uh, about the time I was out in Dickinson uh, at the Chateau. It's just a little one right on her wrist that says be still um, because going back to school, um, I I think she put a lot of pressure on herself because I had let her quit her job. We cut our income in half for her to do that. And uh, I, I think she felt a lot of pressure to actually do well and such so she she got that as a way to kind of calm herself down so yeah she's got she's got one which cool kudos to her um but i like yeah if you want to do that you can but i was like you'll never get me to get one <laughs> so <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with not having them yeah i, I mean and I don't judge I, people who do do have them. It's you know. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm very happy they've become more accepted, and that you can get them in places that are more available in the workplace. Yeah, it's uh, you know to me it's just a way that some people express themselves, and you know, as long as it's not like you put something like super obscene on yourself, that's like ooh, um, right. You know, but otherwise, no, it's just a form of art. So it's all right. Good. Maybe we'll get Howard really drunk one night, and then he'll say yes to having the Triple B logo. <laughs> no. Like on his ankle or something. You know, where nobody nah. will see it. Nah. How about I... full size across your back like a billboard? <laughs> no. <laughs> if, if I was going to do something like Triple B related, it wouldn't be the logo. It'd, It'd be, be IP Appreciation be. Month. <laughs> 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 No, I, uh, I'd want, I would want something that I I truly felt, you know, like encapsulated the show and some of the things that have been created out of it. So you need a palate cleanser. How about a shot of whiskey? That, I mean, that's a fairly new thing. I this would have to be something that's like the quintessential, and that's like I don't know what that would be. So that's couldn't tell you. But yeah, probably the Windows X. For you're done with it. How, how about just a uh, a blank out of five, and then you can write in permanent marker on it every time you <laughs> have a beer? <laughs> uh, no, no, <laughs> not not gonna do that one for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now that now that we've gotten to the point of the show where we're just throwing ideas for tattoos <laughs> out for Howard, uh, Kidder, I think we've been talking for way too long. It's time we wrap this show up. And, uh, you know, hit some hit some plugs. Well, before we're plugging anything, just uh, want to pass along the news that uh, Afa Anoy has passed away. The Wild Samoan at 80 years old. No longer. So take a moment and uh, hug your loved ones. Okay, now it's time for the cheapest part of this show, and that's us hawking for money. So please support us. I was waiting for Howard. Keep you made the local geek walk away. Yeah, exactly. That's typical. <laughs> He's like, I gotta go make some more beer. Keep this content going. Uh, Facebook and Instagram, like us and follow us, and please help us share the posts and whatnot. <clears throat> Big D. Uh, if you would get us to all of your friends, your family and acquaintances, 
We want uh, them to be part of the Triple B family as well. And what? I didn't say anything. I'm just sitting You're here thinking something. I, I'm trying to come up with what I'm going to say for uh, final thoughts. You know, that, that's uh, how you had to will be uh, non-existent. Oh, sweet and invisible, like one of those glow-in-the-dark tattoos. All right. That's very awesome, Howard. I like your style. Just finish cheap flux, man. BeerBluesBS.com. That's our website. What are you? What the frick is that now? What? It's just a head on a stick. Is it a Cyberman? Is it the Statue of Liberty? Like, what is it? No, just a head on a stick. That's just weird, man. Local geek comes back and he's like, what the frick? <laughs> or if I go out Battlestar Galactica, what the frack? Just one of those things. I've been assembling models. I got a lot of extra bits lying around. <laughs> yeah, because they all fell out of your head. <laughs> That's uh, what an IPL will do to you. Yes, yes. Thank the Lord. This is all. What is that? Is that a turd? No. It's a poor's head. Well, when it was blurry, it looked like something else. Okay. Streamlabs.com slash beer blues BS. Streamlabs.com slash beer blues BS. Streamlabs.com slash beer blues BS. There's three times to get it in. Get it done. Help us subscribe, and your name can be in all of our streaming live events for eternity. As little as one dollar a month can help save a, a starving podcast or a failing podcast. Anyway. Yeah, help us out, please. Streamlines.com slash BS and our website, BeerBluesBS.com. Facebook, Instagram, like, share, subscribe. We're on YouTube. Please visit us on YouTube for the video version of this whole thing. And then we're on every audio platform out there, including Spotify, Pandora, Stitcher, TuneIn, IMDb, Player FM, iHeartRadio, Amazon Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and all of the other podcast places. Just search for Beer Blues. And BS. JS, what's your final thoughts? I need another beer. That's correct, JS. Thanks for your final thoughts. <clears throat> Let's move along. Uh, Big D, the next one to join. You got some final thoughts for us tonight? Yeah, I'm spent past few minutes trying to figure out which makes you angrier, the cherry or the IPA. I'm starting to think, just quit the foreplay, throw a cherry in the IPA, call it good. Uh. I might die. I'll write one hell of a eulogy for you. <laughs> I don't think you're going to be allowed in the church. You I'll might let... be sm you might be smited. <laughs> <laughs> um, who am I kidding? It's probably not going to be in a church. Uh, local geek, uh, over to you. Yeah, I've, I've actually got two final thoughts. Two! Good, you have one for Big D. The first one is a, a little bit of a plug for our local favorite Thomas Moriarty's. Um, they are expecting to sell their 10,000th old fashioned probably this weekend. And oh, they are man. giving a, they're giving away a prize pack valued at almost $300 to the person who purchases that 10,000th old fashioned. Yeah, no, wow. doing this weekend. <laughs> they're not open Sunday, are they? Nope. Frick. <clears throat> my my second Come final on. thought is uh Howard I've been following the the battleship game going on between Oscar Zero and the uh Minuteman National Historic Site and uh, I see Oscar Zero's not uh, doing too well. No. No. It uh <clears throat> hasn't been good. Hasn't been good. Also, this is uh like been like yeah, they were trying to do this like over the off season, and this is like drug on through most of the summer. Um, but it's—I I will say—I have enjoyed it. I hope they uh, keep something, some kind of a uh, 
uh, friendly battle between the two sites going somehow, be it through another battleship game or something else. Yeah, I have a feeling that they will take a break for a while, and then I, I think they'll pick it up again with something else. I, cool. I don't know what exactly, and uh, my my wonderful site supervisor hasn't given me any hints or spoilers, um, but if, if you need some good kind of... I think the one thing I suggested to him is that we needed to... Or they should have thought of some way to like keep like a post pinned at the top with like that you could follow along, like the guesses and such, in case you missed it up. A, a yeah, that that would be handy to have something that shows you know each side who they where they've picked and what they've hit and missed, and e- yeah. something easy to catch up on. Right, you know, if they could keep like a post up there and they just edit out the picture and just update mm-hmm. it, you know. Yeah, I think that would be cool. But it's been fun. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I I think it's been been great. Uh, so it's it's all good, all good. Good final thought. Good. Hey, Howard. Uh, yeah, I got one. A little bit of an announcement. Could be fun. Uh, but a project has crossed my desk that I think is going to be easy enough have enough interest and such that uh i'm gonna try and film it for a howard's cave of wonder and try to bring Ooh. back howard's cave of wonder for something i don't want to reveal what it is in case i this is all smoke and i uh don't don't actually pull this off or film it but i i have something that came up that i'm like i think i can make an interesting howard's cave of wonder so look for that to come that's my hope uh, it might take me a while to actually film it and work on it, but I actually have a Kickstarter that recently came in that I keep forgetting to bring downstairs with me when I come on the show and show off a little bit. Oh so, yeah. Spoiler for a future episode that I'll probably try to remember to bring that down. Well, right. we'll see it next week then. I'm I'm out of town next week, so we'll bring it out of town and then join the show. I, I don't think I'll make it to the show because I'll be in uh, Montana, so I'll be in the mountain time zone and it won't quite be bedtime yet. It's okay. just means that uh, IPA Appreciation Month is going to go on longer for you. I know. Gross. I, I tried to knock myself ahead a little bit and I knocked myself upside the head a little bit. Yeah, thankfully I'm almost done with this garbage. <clears throat> I've only got like five left, so... I haven't kept count of where I'm at. So <laughs> I only know because I'm in an even row of the box of 12 pack you gave me. And I know that one of those six that's left is not an IPA and it's something that uh, we need to have with JS. So. Yes, that, that is the celebratory beer that I put in there for once all four of us have completed IPA appreciation month. So it sounds good like I'm going to be the one holding things up. So. Well, you're going to have to step it up. Well, I, I knew I was going to fall behind with a beat having to do parent in charge one month or one weekend. So. True. So so if I can get three on the next episode, I might be able to keep up with you there. Uh, yeah, that's a that, that is a possibility. <sighs> OK. So as we are wrapping up this show, I just want to uh, mention and throw out <clears throat> that uh I believe it was yesterday, real time. There was quite the abysmal incident that occurred in Bismarck regarding an individual who does not care about societal laws, rules, or regulations. Assaulted his uh, somebody he was dating, I believe. And anyway, the full details are in the news article. But a civilian intervened and tried to break this up, and the individual beat this certain person into uh, intensive care. And this individual happens to be a friend of this show, Mr. Marco Parada. Marco likes to follow along with us with the wrestling reviews in particular, uh, but he also has uh, watched and shared uh, videos and has commented on radio things throughout my career in radio. And uh, I just want to share this moment that we are thinking about you, Marco. Also, 
if you want to join the GoFundMe, share some information or money to help in the uh, recovery costs there for Marco. Uh, obviously, with this being a directed assault upon him, the courts need to rule in the case and make this whole thing covered because his medical bills should not have to go to him at all. But to help his family, there's a GoFundMe page that's set up. The link is here and in the show notes. So please, if you have a couple dollars, send it over. And uh, I know Marco would appreciate that. Um, and wishing the best for him. Uh, stepping in in this incident with children watching a strangulation occur in front of them and Marco stepping in to try and break it up before police uh, arrived. And then after police arrived, he, this individual chose to not only fight with police, but also uh, knee or kick uh, at least one officer in the groin and resist officers as they were attempting to take this individual into custody. And so I hope this individual never sees the light of day because he is a piece of <laughs> And I don't care if he sees this. Because <laughs> that's why. You want to do that? You belong in prison. So, uh, anyway, Marco... Looking forward to having your comments on future wrestling reviews if we ever do the damn things again because there's so many things that are happening and time and jobs and everything. But hopefully you can at least join us for the regular versions of the show. And uh, speedy recovery. Any final thoughts beyond final thoughts? I, I don't think so. I don't know that any of us could easily have followed that up. <laughs> so... Anyway, um, on a positive note, thank you. We appreciate you for being here for this and every episode of Beer, Blues, and BS. And uh, on my show on the radio, appreciate you being there for that. If you're listening uh, Monday through Friday, 2 to 7 p.m. Central Time or Saturdays noon to 4 p.m. Central Time because I'm cross-promoting doing this and that. And hopefully you are here because of uh, one of those reasons. So thank you for being here for this and every episode of Beer, Blues, and BS, even though I put myself through hell with this <laughs> for you. Video, audio, doesn't matter. Like, share, subscribe. Help us help you by getting to the masses so that we can keep this show going because son of a <laughs> it's one thing after another. So for Big D... For Local Geek, for Howard Blues, and for JS, because he had to go. I'm the man, the myth, the legend, Mark Kenner. Thanks for being here for this and every episode of Beer Blues and BS. Keep your glass at least half full. There is free beer tomorrow, and we will catch you on down that non-hop, get the mower, chop that down, Tuscan Highway. And we'll see you on the next episode of Beer, Blues, and Beer. You have been listening to a UA production of Beer, Blues, and BS. If you enjoyed the show, help others find out about it by rating the show or leaving a review at your podcast listening service of choice. Thanks for listening, and may your glass never be empty. UA Productions presents A Glimpse Behind the Curtain. All right. Another episode in the books. Gator, I just want to say thank you for uh, embracing the spirit of IPA Appreciation Month, even though you're not a fan of them. <laughs> Makes me want to throw up every week. Me, me too, but it, uh, it, it's fun to have something such as that for content reasons if nothing else yeah thanks man <clears throat> thanks. yeah and, and hey we're like halfway through
So. Yeah, I've I've had five now. So. Uh, let's see. Actually, maybe I've had six. Two, four, six. Tonight was seven, so I have three left. No, I've I've got five left, so I must be five I in. Two left. Yeah. Thank Lord. <laughs> I, did, I did not get one brewed in time for IPA appreciation months, so you're off the hook on that one, Kidder, for now. Please don't. Just make something good, okay? I, I, st I still I, have to make one just to check it off the whole list of, you know, I brewed it. Until next year, IPA appreciation month, round two. At least that month should only have four Fridays in it, hopefully. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now you can do a uh, a hateful eight spinoff because it's the eighth month. <laughs> I I think it's gonna be one of those that when I try to bring it up again next year, like everybody's gonna be like, nope, nope, sorry, not home, can't take deliveries. <laughs> oh, I'm all for it. I I'm not a fan of IPAs, but I'm all for it. Maybe maybe we need to choose a, like a different type of beer for next year. I, I do like JS's idea of doing like a, a shandy maybe in uh spring to summer transition time frame, so like May June. Yeah, the the challenge gets to be, you know, the fact that we do two what's on taps, you know, every show, sometimes more. Finding enough beer to get us through the month of that. You know, IPA as much as people like them or hate them, is doable because there's so many goddamn IPAs on the market. You know, there's yeah. whole sections of IPAs. You know, I last few times I've gone to look for even just a good sour to because I like sours. It's like I get like two, three options, and that's it. It's like, what about like a generic domestic month? You know, uh, the the one I want to do with that is I want to, and I don't know that it would make for like a full great episode. But maybe it's like sometime when we get together, we we'll do like a blind taste test of like a bunch of those. That'd be fun. And see if you, every, anybody could identify which beer was which. Like Bud, Bush, Coors, Miller. Yeah. So like some, some hams, some. Uh, uh, what's the other one I'm trying to think of? The green can. Uh, Northeast? No. Uh, God, what is it? I'm totally blanking on it. It's like super generic. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't tend to buy generic beer anymore these days. But yeah, to do something like that, you know, could be a fun thing. So, but yeah, but you're not helpful. What's new? What's new? That was the wrong button. That well, was Heineken or what are coming up under green can beer. And that's not what I'm trying to think of. Uh, Rolling Rock? Yes, that's the one. 